Okay, well, th uh, thank you very much indeed uh, to the province of Friesland, to, uh, to Jin and Cartesius for the invite as one of the, uh, I think, probably 10% of non-Dutch here. Uh, it, it's no great surprise to me uh, that, that the initiative is, is this initiative around regions and sustainable innovation is starting in the Netherlands. So I, I particularly with the, I see the people involved in this, and I think it's a very timely event, particularly uh, from a po policy perspective, uh, the, in the competitiveness and innovation program of the European Commission, 40% of the money has been allocated to so-called eco-innovation, 2007 to 2013. What sustainable innovation and eco-innovation means is different things to different people. And uh, I think that's one, one point. I'd also like to start with one other thought that maybe we can take into the debate. That is innovation a process or is it an output? If it is, if it is a process, maybe we need to be thinking about you know, what should be coming out of the pipeline. You know, better products, technologies, jobs, businesses. So it's a process or output. So I'm now going to do a little bit of a whistle-stop tour through some things that I've sort of seeing around the place. So, you know, this issue of, you know, what is sustainable innovation? Clearly, innovation should be part of sustainability, but is it? The, the, the terminology is sort of starting to arise on the way now. We've clearly got major challenges around resources, resource productivity, the new OECD and UNEP initiative, uh, challenges around water, potable water globally, Obviously, climate change and the challenges that we all face with that. New terminologies, uh, carbon footprints, water footprints, you know, ecological rucksacks. New to, you know, weren't they really in dinner party conversation 18 to 24 months ago? So this, these things are moving as fast. Global dimension there. You know, we can't really talk about these things in isolation. As, well, as many of the speakers have, have spoken about. European dimension, we've had the sort of traditionally the, the green and northern Europe, but we, now we've got Spain moving in, Portugal, you know, the technologies. Uh, Japan, uh, top-down approach, uh, the, the smarter use of different policy instruments, voluntary agreements, laws, the green purchasing law even passed in 2001, setting the market for these things. In the US, you know, don't necessarily look at the federal level, look down into some of the, uh, you know, the cities, the states, California. Uh, clearly, you know, this guy I would never believe would have got onto my PowerPoint slides. But, you know, the passing of the, uh, of the greenhouse gas management law, uh, you know, is clearly about climate change, but it's also about setting the framework to develop new technologies and businesses. And, and it's quite clear that the next, you know, political leader there is going to be gr at least greener than the last. Maybe we can, you know, leave it at that level of uh, qualitative uh, judgment. Uh, but what's behind a lot of the growing interest? What its costs? I mean, you're once losing track of what the, the price of oil is now. You know, 130, 135. You know, costs now. You know, really starting to focus people's minds. If you've got a technology or a service or you know whatever that can help save your clients money, this is becoming an, you know energy uh, cost. This is now becoming an interesting thing. Apart from the technologies, capital uh, 2.9 million invested in the so-called clean tech industry in 2006. And I think one of the differences there, and we touched on it a little bit, is is maybe in Europe and Japan we've been rather top down. Whereas in the States, you're definitely starting to see this bottom-up activity. The, entre the serial entrepreneurs moving in, the, the funders, the people from the, you know, the internet revolution moving into this space. So things are happening. And so there's this difference, entrepreneurialism versus top-down. Uh, competition, and, and this is entirely around you know, this event, competition for the new businesses, the jobs, etc., etc. Um, trying to track those businesses. And uh, Chindia, China and <laughs> India, the pressure on global resources. Uh, uh, China buying, I saw on the BBC World or something, buying a whole new mountain in Peru because it's full of copper. You know, whoops. Uh, I think I skipped a couple of things there. Um, so, Chindia. Customers, I believe 
we're in a third green consumer way. It's not the first green consumer way. We had one in the 60s, we had one in the late 80s, early 90s, and we've got this new wave around carbon. To what extent this is going to you know, dip or continue is another question. But I, you know, some of the things we've seen before, uh, how are they going to change? You know, is, it re is it now really different to where it was you know, in the summit in Rio in 1992? So we've got customers, another wave of awareness there. Um, but also, and importantly, I think what maybe is slightly different uh, is, is now the movement in of the retailers. Walmart, Marks and Spencers, others throughout the world, they're now in there uh, discussing the, the issue. Walmart sneezes, the world, particularly down through the supply chain, uh, takes notice. Climate change, you know, more, more and more consensus around the science there. But also another C being cities, the advent, now, the advent of now growing of, of eco cities, you know, the C20, the C40 initiative of the world's biggest cities. Uh, you know, if you aggregate that, you know, in a sense, uh, buying power, this is also very influential in terms of market. The Mazda zero waste, zero energy city. Maybe we're going to start to see a race as to who builds that first real eco city. Dong Tang in China, Mazda in, uh, in the Middle East. Maybe as we've had, you know, the, who builds the first and the biggest, highest tower in the world. Maybe it's going to be around this agenda. And so I think, you know, on the basis of this event, yeah, maybe we are moving into this a new set of opportunities around sustainable or eco innovation. And it is going to mean you new, new products and technologies, but also we're going to have to think, you know, more smartly about how we ad adapt, you know, uh, uh, you know, our existing, if you like, footprint. Uh, uh, you know, housing construction, 40% of CO2 emissions. Most of the policy initiatives are around new build, but the biggest problems are the embedded stock there. So how do we innovate with new films or whatever go on the windows to, to insulate the property? How do we become smarter when we, we move into the properties uh, that we insulate effectively there rather than thinking about it when all of our stuff is in the loft? So we need to change our behaviours. And then also maybe we're going to have to attack, adapt, you know, climate change adaptation, new, new, new technologies, etc. And once we get down to the product level, a lot of our products actually look pretty similar. You know, we've had this incremental innovation. We're seeing interesting things like the boat. But, you know, these products don't look a lot different. Really. But there is a growing, you know, business opportunity. A business, you know, 800 billion uh, UK Environmental Innovations Advisory uh, Group, quote, 800 billion by uh, 2016 market for sustainable technologies. And that probably undervalues um, or well, doesn't take account of things like the boat, how we integrate the technologies into the products, for example. And behind that, there are going to be opportunities for, you know, so-called zero, uh, uh, zero carbon products and technologies. But what is zero? We have no standards here. Solar technologies and the, and the you know, electronics and all the infrastructure behind that. Turbines, uh, you know, camera, you know, but still, I look at some of the turbos and I think, you know, maybe this is like, is a bit Model T Ford. Uh, you know, have we designed, you know, these products for modularity? The, the electronics improves, we take that out and we, you know, put more efficient electronics in. Uh, so how do we, uh, you know, take these technologies forward? Uh, you know, uh, housing, sustainable building and the technologies within them. And we have the, already the building of these, uh, you know, pilots uh, initiatives, uh, um, and the, the, there will be, you know, more activity, mobility, smart grids, water conservation technology. So many opportunities there for entrepreneurs and others who have their eyes open to this. And you know, on the material side, recycling technologies. But we may start to see things change uh, from different directions. We may not see the Japanese selling. Uh, recycling technologies, we may see them selling whole recycling factories. We may see them actually selling their knowledge from their system innovation. That's come from experience of visiting and seeing. We started looking at the technology, but if that may not where, may it be where, where it you know, ends up in a sense with the competitive opportunities. And we have methodologies from this you know, within companies, the Philips six fold areas. We have Michael's methodologies and uh, we have, uh, you know, other approaches. Uh, metaphorically, what can we learn from literature, bi biomimetics, 
both the, the metaphor but also the understanding. Ha, ha, do, you know, understanding the machine in the spider that grows the silk, as well as the metaphor. And there is a subtle difference there. Uh, and, and thinking from biology, you know, biological systems. The, the examples of, you know, uh, you know, looking at the brewery, using the waste to grow fish, using the excess carbon dioxide to grow fruit and vegetables. How can we might be much more effective and efficient about, uh, you know, these things? And, and much of what we've seen has been, you know, little, in a sense, particularly within the companies and the bigger companies, it's been incremental. Uh, and that's what they're doing. These things are getting, you know, they can't necessarily see it, but they are getting, you know, more efficient. And there's been some element of, you know, redesign. And there's been new approaches where we thought about delivering, you know, the function rather than the product. But much of this is going to be about, you know, designing new systems and approaches. And, the, and you know, with the aim of producing more sustainable solutions. And one of the things that I thought was excellently uh, illustrated yesterday was we need these bridges between where we are now and what the future may look like. Because we don't know. And that may not be a commercial product, but we need to set ourselves those challenges to build that understanding and learning. So, you know, uh, what, how can, should, a, should a flooring company producing carpet flooring tiles, if they really have a goal of being you know, sustainable to by 2020, maybe it's an opportunity to start to think about flooring solutions where you, you use human power to generate energy. And there's already some Dutch guys who've won an award in the, or I think in the, who are at MIT linking with the uh, previous conversations, who've won an award in Japan exactly on this so-called crowd farming ideas. So should, you're going to see some interesting, you know, uh, natural diversification. So I think again the things that, you know, what is the level of change? It's not a debate about change, it's what is the level of change. And the clock is ticking competitively and environmentally. And it is exactly as I think has been said. It's about innovation is, is not just about good ideas. It's about, you know, getting those ideas through research and evaluation to products on the market. Europe, we've been very good at generating those ideas, but proportionally, you know, there's blockages as to why those ideas haven't, you know, gone, gone further. So part of this is maybe developing systems, much better systems where we get the right people talking to one another. The inventors may not be the entrepreneurs who are not the funders. We need the elements of the system to come together to enable these things to more effectively come together. And I don't believe that those systems are in place effectively in Europe at the moment. And maybe at a regional level, we maybe need to start to, you know, develop, you know, eco-innovation value chain. So we need to start to build, as, you know, implication is here, you know, labs that start to generate these, you know, products and technologies that then, you know, link to incubator centers that grow the businesses, that then develop clusters, that develop sections within business parks. And then even, as we see in China, whole solar, China Solar Valley, you know, so how do we take that from, you know, right through the process? And it's happening. And in closing, you know, maybe what's going to, you know, uh, invigorate this agenda? Well, if we've got increased proliferation of, uh, uh, of you know, disasters, or at least reporting of it, uh, you know, maybe this is going to be an influence. But we've got short memories on some of these things. So don't know. Don't we certainly need the stakeholders to come together much more effectively. What government <coughs> can't do this by themselves, business can't do it, etc., etc. So we need more effective mechanisms of bringing people together. We certainly need smarter policy approaches on demand and supply side. Green public procurement, if that can be enabled and we can cut out some of the bureaucratic reality of much of that, then this can really, you know, set, uh, you know, major opportunities for government to, 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 to initiate, as we heard yesterday from the mayor here. And we, we need leadership, and we're starting to see that coming from other places. This is Google Plaza. Um, you know, they're demonstrating, they're showing, using the technologies, and, and they're now setting up a whole new side of business. And on, some, on a lot of this, you know, to think out of the box, we're going to need to jump out of the box. We're going to need to do things differently and set up different ways of doing this. And I think the cities have a key role to play. 
I think what we're seeing now is particularly, you know, again, bearing in mind the previous conversation, we're starting to see money move into this space, particularly from the U.S. John Doerr, you know, behind Google, found a billion dollars, you know, in, he's on this. And we need much better networks bringing people together, you know, people who maybe didn't necessarily talk together. And there are going to be risks and uncertainty, but there are going to be opportunities for those entrepreneurs that want to, who's, who can read those, those foreseen and unforeseen trends and issues. So thanks very much.